Welcome back, Fantasy Fiction Fanatics. It's great to see you again, and I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be doing another book review, and today's book review is going to be on Dragons of Fate by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Now, I know I have had you guys wanting me to do this review for a little while, and I'm sorry it took so long. It was not intentional. It just ended up being at a busy time for me, and so I have not been able to read as quickly or as much as I would have liked to. So again, I'm sorry this took me so long to get to you, but I am doing it now. I am finally getting to talking to you about it. So hopefully you are not too uh, mad with me and too impatient and we can go ahead and discuss this book and my thoughts on it. So just a really quick thing to say is if you don't know what book this is, this is the second book of a series. Um, the Destiny series for Dragonlance. So if you haven't read the first one, I would go back and recommend watching the first review of the first book. Um, I will link it somewhere around here for you to be able to go to that book instead because this one does feed off of that one. Um, I don't think there'll be too many spoilers for that one, just a couple. But again, if you don't want to have spoilers and you haven't read that first one, check out that first one before checking out this one. For those of you who have already read the first book and are ready to continue on uh, discussing the second one, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, if you like this review, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. If you aren't subscribed already, we would love to have you as part of the Fantasy Fiction Fanatics community. All right, so this book is continuing directly from our first book. Uh, they are in the past. Destina uh, ended up taking um, Raislin and uh, Strum to the past with Tass as well. And the device broke and now they're a little bit stuck <laughs> back in the time of Huma. So now they have to figure out what they're going to do, not only in the past until they can go back to the future if they even can. Um, and they're hoping that the fact that they have the Grey Gem is not going to change and alter history to the point of no return <laughs> but they're uh they're gonna have to see what they need to do from here what did i like about this book um i really liked the dichotomy between the past and you know what happened in the past what they know about the past and what they are wondering if they've changed. So I really like that fact that there's always this unknown of like, okay, this is what happened, but did it always happen this way? Are we changing history? What point do we not changing history so much that, you know, it's broken and changing the future? All these little things. It's like, okay, what's the, what are we, tra what are we doing here? So I really like that, that constant dichotomy between the original past and the new past and which one and which way did it happen originally. Um, of course, I love the writing style and the feel of the book. It feels, of course, like a Dragonlance book because the writers are excellent at writing and the top notch of that continues on. Um, it definitely is a great writing style. It's so clear. It's so crisp. It's so easy to read. It's fabulous, just as always. Mark Weiss and Hastings Treatment do a great job. I also like the uh, mix of original characters and new characters. So we've got some that we know, some that are new and that we're learning about, and we're seeing them blended together to where there are now all characters that we know. And we're seeing changes of our original characters based on their interactions with these new characters. So I will say that something I really enjoy is getting a blend of these different characters some we know about, some we're just learning about, and I like that a lot. I also like the ending. Of course, the ending of the first book left you a little bit on a cliffhanger of what's going to happen, and this second book also left you on a cliffhanger that's kind of like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? So I do like how the books are incentivizing you to come back to learn more because things are happening and you're not really sure how things are going to move forward past this point. So definitely really like that. I always, even if it's frustrating because you're like, gosh darn it, I don't know what's going to happen next and i got to wait a while for the next book. I do always like when it's like that anticipation is given to the reader. So overall, lots of good things to like about it. 
However, what did I not like? And I have to say, unfortunately for this book, there are some things that I didn't care for as much. Um, the first thing actually relates to a lot of comments I got on that first book. So when I did the review originally, a lot of you guys didn't like Tass um, and his character. You felt like he seemed kind of idiotic and not himself. And though I didn't quite see it when I was reading it, I did understand everything that you guys were saying about the character and... Sorry guys, one sec. Um, anyway, sorry about that. Let's move on. Um, Tass's character, I could see what you guys were saying about it. I could tell, like, when you guys mentioned things, I was like, yeah, that's true. I see what you're saying. It didn't bother me when I was reading it, and there was many things that I actually did like about Tass in that first one, but I totally understood why a lot of you were dissatisfied with Tass Loth. However, in this one, I really felt like I was not happy with Tasloff's character while actively reading it. I feel like I fully got that sense of where he wasn't like he would be in an original um, Dragonland story, like the Chronicles. Uh, he was very talkative, which is of course Tasloff's MO, but to the point where it's like he didn't care about it being the past, he didn't have any common sense about it. I felt like sure there would be some degree of that because he can't help himself. But there also would have been more trying not to completely, you know, blow history by just blurting out everything that happens. Um, I just, I didn't really like him in this story. And that's really sad for me to say. And it takes a lot for me to get there because Tasloff is one of my all-time favorite characters. So I just felt like I agreed with you guys in this one and the fact that I don't feel like they did him justice. And I don't feel like... He was as good of a character in this story. So, a little sad about that. Um, very disappointed in that, actually, <laughs> since I love just seeing Tass's praises, but unfortunately in this book I cannot do that. Um, the next thing that I kind of didn't like is the fact that I don't feel like anything really happened. In the first book I felt like the first half was very slow, but at least the second half we got adventure and something happening. In this one, I feel like this is not an adventure book. Um, this is not about going on a grand fight against evil or anything. Um, most of the time, they're doing a lot of nothing. <laughs> yes, there are moments where things happen. I'm not saying that it completely has nothing that happens, but it feels like the overall arcing story, you can count on one hand how many things of importance actually happen and that are actually interesting and adventurous. Um, so I really was lacking the feel of the plot line driving us for this adventure like a Dragonlance usually does. And I was very disappointed about that too. I it, it felt a little bit more like a slice of life. That's a little bit uh, extreme to say that. It's not really a slice of life. But it kind of had more of that like everyday things happening kind of feel than going on an adventure and fighting against evil. So didn't, didn't care for that as much. And last but not least, I didn't really like how there was an unequal balance between the characters attention wise. We get a lot on Raceland's side and not very much on Strum's side. I felt like in some ways, why was he even there? <laughs> because we didn't really get that much interaction between him and Huma. We didn't really get much interaction between him and Raislin. It really was very one-sided in what we were looking at. And so I would have liked a little bit more time with that growth with Strum and Huma and their interactions. So I was a bit bummed about that as well. It didn't really feel like we got even much connection between uh, Raceland and Strum when they're supposed to be the two trapped back in time and had differences between them. So it was a little disappointing to me. I was hoping for a little bit more development between their relationship and I don't feel like we really got that that much. So overall, with all this being said, would I recommend it? Would I not? If you liked book one, I would recommend giving it a shot because of course you want to know what happens. Book one does leave us at a cliffhanger of them being in the past and wanting to know what the heck is going on. Um, but 
it's not really like you have to jump right into it. I do feel like you could wait to read this book until when book three comes out. So that way you can not have to wait again at the end because it does have another ending that's like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? So I feel like the endings are the most investing pieces of the series so far. Um, and it does make you want to know more, but I feel like we're kind of lacking in a lot of the story itself. So I think I recommend it for those who really love Dragonlance and want to keep moving and liked book one. But you don't have to read it right away. You could wait till closer to the next one being released and just reading them both together. So that way you get everything in one shot instead of having to read and then have less motivation to read the third book potentially. All right, I think that's all I wanted to say on this. Um, let me know your thoughts, your feelings, if you've read it, if you're going to read it, or if you're not going to read this book. Please let me know. I'd love to have a discussion with you and to hear your thoughts. Thank you again for waiting so patiently, my Dragonlance lovers, to hear what I had to say on this. I'm sorry it took me longer than I intended, and I hope that this review was helpful for you and was something that you enjoyed. So I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye.